Hi everyone. <laughs> My name is Hoàng Anh Đậu and uh, I'm from University of California, uh, Riverside, and I um, I am a student, a professor. I'm in Kiel. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> uh, we have a serious paper about the magic profile, and this is uh, number five in the series. Um, <clears throat> actually, number four will be presented at VLDB in two weeks. So the takeaway message from this talk um, is as so we have this magic profile. It was introduced about a year ago at ICDM, um, and is is a, a very nice tool. It's a domain <coughs> independent approach that helps you solve many time series data mining problems very easily. Um, but sometimes you want to incorporate some domain knowledge into um, our data mining task. And the annotation vector framework is a principal way uh, for you to do so. Okay. <clears throat> um, the main motivation behind uh, our work is that um, we notice a um, limitation of current uh, motive search. That is, um, we can have a mismatch between the return motive and um, what user really want uh, from classical motif search. So I will explain the reasons behind these issues and um, <coughs> um, show you a way to address these problems. I've been talking about um, motifs. So what are time series motifs? Um, they are um, subsequences in the longer time series, which are very similar to each other. And um, in classical motif search, what we usually care about is the top one motif. These are the pair of subsequences, which are the most similar to each other. Okay. And time series motif uh, is used as a subroutine in many time series data mining tasks. Okay. Um, so let me give you an overview of the matrix profile uh, in this one slide. So um, the figure on the left, uh, the top is the time series, and in it I embedded two sideways. Um, the one at the bottom is this matrix profile, and uh, the matrix profile is the data structure. Uh, it contains a distance of all the subsequences to its nearest neighbor. Okay. <clears throat> so the height of the, the matrix profile actually tell you that this um, subsequence at this location is this far away from its nearest neighbor in the time series. So to locate the top one motif, you simply um, find the lowest point in the matrix profile. Um, so the lowest point here is the top one motif. Okay. So with the magic profile, you basically have uh, the motif for free, but um, there's a problem here. That is, the motif is returned by this um, classical <coughs> approach. Um, may not be what you want for the problem at hand, and I will um, give you some examples why it is the case. So let's start with stop word motif. Um, I use the stop word because um, it's similar to the notion of stop word in uh, information retrieval. We have in English, we have A, um, N, G, N. They appear everywhere, but they have very um, <coughs> little meaning. Okay. So for example, here um, we have a reason of a calibration signal, and if we apply classical motif search, what we discover will actually be the two motif in um, a collaboration signal area, which is of no interest to us. What we really want is what in the true ECG region. So let's skip the uh, collaboration uh, region and jump to the true ECG region. Still we run into another problem here. <clears throat> Classical motif search will discover the two pairs, um, the pair of normal heartbeats as the top one motif. Um, 
because they are everywhere in the time series, but the doctor might be more interested in uh, something abnormal. Uh, for example, the um, ventricular contractions in this time series. Okay. Also, another problem with classical motif search is that it tends to favor um, the simple shape. So, for example, here, um, you notice two uh, similar patterns, and you think it might be the top one motif, but actually, um, motif search will discover these two drift as the top one motif. Okay. So, um, the question is, can we make return motif uh, meaningful and actionable for our task at hand? Currently, there's no uh, way to support this with classical motif search. So uh, what we uh, introduce is uh, the annotation vector framework. The annotation vector is a time series. Um, it consists of um, values from 0 to 1. It can be binary. It can be continuous in this range. <clears throat> and this uh, vector is supposed to encode the domain knowledge. Okay. So um, a low value in the annotation vector means um, in that reason you are not interested. A high value means you are more likely to um, be interested in, in motif in this reason. Okay. For example, here I have um, an annotation vector that encodes the biases that we prefer the motif that occur on or near, um, near or on a weekend and we don't care about what happened in the weekdays. So the idea is that we make this annotation vector, we're going to combine it with the matrix profile to create a new matrix profile. We call it the corrected matrix profile because it in incorporates our um, domain biosis. Um, and the way you do so is that um, <coughs> you modify the matrix profile with um, a correction term such so that um, Re recall that um, how you find the motif with the matrix profile, you locate the lowest uh, point in the matrix profile. So the idea is that uh, for the reason of low or little uh, interest, we want to raise the matrix profile high up. So that motif in this reason will no longer appear in the potential motif uh, pool. That's why we set the AV value to zero. Um, and then for reason of interest, we want to um, have a high value of the annotation vector, and it can be as high as one. Okay, so we are left with the question how we can create um, the annotation vector, and this is problem um, dependent, but I will show that um, in many cases, all uh, we need is just a few lines of code. Here's an example. Um, I have this sleep data, <clears throat> and then the two red bars that you see actually um, indicate um, the reason of, um, um, so we have this data, uh, device to record the sleep data, and it's only have eight bit uh, precision, okay? <clears throat> so um, if we apply classical motif search, what we discover is um, the pair of motif on the left, and they have this flat reason. And it's actually not meaningful because um, the actual flat reason can take on many different shapes, but we don't know because we don't have the um, exact uh, measure of that um, timestamp. Okay. So if we applied uh, the guided motif search with annotation vector, we can discover the true motif um, on the right-hand side is um, indication of REM sleep stage. Um, and what we do is we can slide a window across this time series and re record how many times it hit the upper and lower limit and use it as um, the value of the annotation vector. And then we do one last step of um, normalizing it to be in range 0 and 1. And this is the actual MATLAB code that um, we use to create this annotation vector. Another example, um, you see if I apply classical motif search, I discover these two motif, um, the cyan um, color code here. Um, but um, this actually not meaningful. Uh, this brand image, <coughs> oh, I have 
yeah, it's actually brand imaging data. And then um, we happen to have um, an um, uh, accelerometer to record the data as well. And if we look at the acceleration, we can see that reason, this reason actually align with um, uh, that motion artifact because um, the person may be shaking and then uh, the device record um, non-meaningful um, data. Okay. <laughs> so how we can suppress this motion artifact in a systematic way when we have, say, hours or days um, volume of data to look at? Okay, <laughs> so um, very easy. We can uh, work on the um, acceleration data. Uh, we can slide a window across this time series, record the standard deviation of each window, and then use the mean of all the standard deviations at the threshold. Uh, for all the points below this threshold, we assign with the value of zero, and then the one above, um, <clears throat> oh no, for the one below it, it got a value of one, and then the one above it, the annotation vector will have value of zero. Okay. And, and, and um, the upper um, top right is the actual MATLAB code to do so. Okay, uh, I mentioned um, the bias of equivalent distance toward a simple shape. So for example, um, you see uh, in the top figure, if we apply classical motif search, we're going to discover this simple ramp up pattern at the top. Um, but the meaningful motif here is actually um, the one below it is um, multiple occurrences of uh, finger flexion, and here is uh, the little finger. <clears throat> so uh, we can have an annotation vector that um, have us put more weight on complex shape. And one simple way to do so is to measure the complexity of the subsequence. Uh, we can slide a window across the time series and record the complexity of the subsequence and use it as a value of the annotation vector. And this is a code to do that. Okay. And with this method, you will discover um, the motif of a complex shape, which is the true motif in this time series. Okay. Uh, the time and space complexity actually we add very um, little overhead um, to, um, <coughs> to the matrix profile. So uh, basically, uh, is that ON, uh, once we compute the matrix profile, um, the, the um, actual time and space overhead to apply motif search with annotation vector is ignorable. Um, so I'm going to the last slide. Um, and again, um, the main idea is that we have this um, one, side, one size fit on algorithm for um, <coughs> of the matrix profile that have it solve many data um, time series data mining problems. Um, and <clears throat> we want to incorporate some domain knowledge into our task. We can do that with the annotation vector with just a few lines of code if we know what we are aiming for. And in this work, I limited um, what we did with the um, motif discovery algorithm, but um, the framework can be generalized to other time series that are mining tasks. Yeah, um, thank you for the attention. <laughs>